Hi there, I'm Timothy Linsdale, radio producer, Christian, and a scouter. <clears throat> Today I want to continue with my uh, uh, efforts on uh, teaching the uh, various pioneering lashings that are used in scouting. <clears throat> Today I'm going to work on the uh, uh, diagonal lashing, and if you would, uh, like and comment on my videos, subscribe to my channel to support my channel if you would. Thank you. Now we'll move on to the uh, discussion of the uh, construction and diagonal lashing. Okay, now <clears throat> one of the reasons for this lashing is you might have an X trestle structure. And uh, that's where you take four poles and you you might have an angle to them. And you're going to have, uh, let me see if I can get another one here for you. And you'd have it up kind of like in that angle. But in the middle you would cross two more poles in that rectangle, if you would. And that will strengthen that construction. The more triangles you use, the stronger they are in a triangle fashion. Okay, so why why do we want <clears throat> to have that? Because you may have a space between, um, let's see if I can get to show you that. Have a space, say, about like that, where they're not touching and solid. So you're going to tie a, a lashing around these two here that will strengthen this area. Now, <clears throat> so the idea, is, again, is to strengthen it. But, if you may have noticed, the other two I'm going to show you, the square lashing, is when your poles are generally uh, at right angles. And then, when you're going to need to tie the two together, you're going to have a shear lashing. But now I'm going to show you the diagonal lashing, because these two cross poles are at at angles, and a diagonal is needed. And that's why we're tying that together like that. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm going to change the configuration of the camera. Uh, is uh, looking down as much as I can so you can see as close as possible to what I am doing in tying this lashing. It's a difficult thing to do on camera. Uh, in the handbook, they give you an artist rendering of the lashing, which is terrific. But they can clean up the, the lashing very easily in the drawing to make it perfect. So it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. Uh, you will start the lashing with a timber hitch. <clears throat> and the way that works is it uh, goes around itself. And then you wrap around about three times. And you'll do that around both poles. And then you'll start your wraps, and then fraps, and then finish with a clove hitch. And uh, that is how that lashing is made. <clears throat> now, lashings are not probably an exact science, uh, which, is, which is fine. You might add another wrap or a frap, uh, another half hitch. Using up extra cord, you don't want to cut. You can use a, a basic half hitch around the post and, um, and then continue on, which will tighten. You can use up a slack. Now, if you're using the same size posts and the cross members as you do the rest uh, posts in the construction, you can you know, tie your first uh, lashing and then cut off your excess cord, and you'll have uh, the size you need. But I would give yourself some slack because you may add an extra wrap or something, and it will end up using up the cord you're going to need at the end to tie your clove hitch. So give yourself a, a break there where you will. Okay. Now we'll uh, go ahead to uh, just a shot of the lashing and the poles give you a good close-up of what it looks like. Okay, uh, here's your equipment. i got the cord. I've cut this as close as I can to, uh, to what I will need as trying to conserve 
our materials. Now to start out with, you're going to want to start with a, a timber hitch. And we're going to come around and then we're just going to go typical three times around back on itself. It's a challenge to do this with on camera and another thing is to do it on a table uh, because uh, it'd be a lot easier if it was on the ground. It's easier for me to film it this way. Okay, so we have our, our timber hitch and we're going to start our first wrap right around underneath the bottom pole and we're going to come right up over both of them and that's really going to be our first wrap and then around and around we go to and then three now it's going to look like four because i got the timber hitch underneath there now in the scout handbook they're going to show it in perfection because they, they they can edit the picture we can't edit it here like that uh, okay, and then once we get around the third one, we're going to um, come around for our third one. I come around and start our uh, other direction, our other diagonal, this direction. So we got one. now three and then we're going to come around the middle of the lashing and start our fraps here are our wraps we have we have one two three one two three wraps each direction now we come around and we make two fraps around the middle Tighten it up. And then we come around and we start our clove hitch on the bottom pole. That's our half hitch, and now we go around to form a clove hitch. Okay. Now, as you can see, we move the timber hitch out of the way. We have one, two, three wraps, one, two, three wraps the other direction. And then we have two fraps. Let me try to move the camera over. The sticks over. You can see the two fraps around the middle. And then we come around and we finish off with a clove hitch. And then that that is our diagonal hitch. And that helps to keep the poles together and strengthen them. A diagonal lashing. That's what that's meant for. Um, that will strengthen the middle for you. Like I said, if you're using the Scout Handbook, it's going to be cleaner looking than this because they can edit these knots out to show you better in the drawing. Okay, so we'll back off the clove hitch and we come around the, twice. We're going backwards around the fraps. And we come around our wraps, our three wraps that direction. Just to maybe help you better understand the knot, the lashing. And then our three, this direction. Now you can just pull the poles apart. Now, <clears throat> when you get done tying one of these, then you can go back over and make a decision about the length of the cord you need based on what's left over. But I would still give yourself a little bit of slack so that when you come around you're not running into the fact that you can't tie your final clove hitch. But if you have extra, remember you can still in, in a quick clove hitch here 
two and a half inches. Second one under the first one. Gives us our clove hitch. And then if you have extra left over, you can tie off with another half hitch. And you can do that as many times as you want for the what's left over. Uh, but for conservation of materials, you want to uh, uh, try to come up with a length that you don't have to work with more than you need. For one reason, it's more difficult <clears throat> to deal with that extra cord, and also you want to conserve your materials. So, there you go. That's, that's the diagonal hitch, and it's used to bring two cross members together that aren't solid and increases the strength of that uh, frame that you're making. So there's the diagonal lashing for you. Okay, now you've seen that. <clears throat> you've seen the lashing in, uh, in, in, in progress. Uh, so you have a good idea of how that, how that functions. If you're struggling, you should uh, get the handbook or look it up in some other fashion to uh, continue to work. Lashings are a bit of a challenge to learn, but they can be a lot of fun with uh, scouts, especially build, you know, build projects, uh, build a, a chair or a, a frame to go over your cooking fire, or a, uh, you might even get as adventurous as building a small tower. And then general, generally, it's you're not supposed to build things over six foot, so somebody can really fall and get hurt. That would be a different project in a different place. Uh, but try that. Um, some units I've seen, there are units that much of what they do is pioneering projects. And I've been to scout fairs where they'll do a whole uh, menagerie of pioneering uh, uh, projects that are kind of amusement park-like for a scout fair. And it is an amazing project, and it takes a lot of work. Uh, they want to wear a pair of gloves and have help, because I, I have made towers, and it's it's a tremendous amount of work, but it's, it is a lot of fun to see it come together. And again, the scouts learn something about construction, uh, the conservation of materials, uh, safety. Uh, environment's important also. Uh, you don't want to be using up uh, poles, cutting down anything live or anything that you don't have permission to. If you're on somebody's land, you have to have permission, and, and uh, they have to give you permission to... You know, if you have down poles to use, uh, you need that permission. They need to understand clear communication about what you're doing and by the rules. And remember where where you're at in the environment, you know, to be clean in your outdoor manners. Um, leave a place better than you found it. That's always a good uh, phrase to follow. So that's important. So that's things that scouts learn, not only the skill in tying that, but the things associated with your activity are important also. So um, like and uh, comment on my video, subscribe to my channel to support my channel if you would. I'd appreciate it. And uh, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll take a look at another lashing again. Uh, and have a great day.